Hey everyone, it's about 11.58 and here to do the Sonic Universe reviews by Dan Dreisen for the next two parts of the Unsung Heroes and uh, well, from what I could tell it seems that he's got a lot to say so let's just get into this, shall we? Uh, Sonic Universe 42, released in September of last year. Tracy Yardle and Steve Dowder do the cover of her and everything. You know, it has Jeffrey. Well, you get the idea for some of you that read the issue. I'll provide a link again, like I say, if this is in two parts and not in the individual boxes or boxes. So, Okay, Ung Sung Hyo. Unsung Heroes. Now, he does mention before he gets into review that he has to break news to Archie's creative, but this homage to 007 is 50 years behind the time, the cover and everything. So, alright. Oh, and then he says at the end, if Archie one, wonders why they're not playing with the big kids, DC and Marvel, they're not, they've got nobody to blame but themselves. Okay, but getting into this, Aung Sung Heroes, Part 2, The Terror Below. A story by Ian Flynn, of course, Tracy Arland did the art, ink is by Jim Amish, colors, Steve Downer, lettering, Jack Moore, uh, Jack Morrell, assistant editor Vince Lobo, editor Paul Kaminsky, editor-in-chief Victor Golick, spy who came down with a cold, Mike Perithero. Oh, <laughs> uh, never mind. Anyway. This is what he says about Sonic Universe 42, Unsung Sung Heroes Part 2, The Terror Below. While Silver, Shard, and Larry were featured in the last month's issue, this time it's Elizis, Lita, and Loka, <laughs> Lita, and Lyko. <laughs> I said Loka. <laughs> oh, 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 no. uh, it's Elizis, Lita, and Lyko who out on August as he takes his morning constitutional by taking a flying leap into the whole, the Battle Bird of Modern made in town, thus giving new meaning to the term, quote unquote, plot hole. Decked down in suits inspired by Ray the Flying Squirrel, the team follows suit. They manage to almost get spotted in the name of dramatic tension. They don't, however, get close enough to notice that Nagus's bottle, well, Botox injections, okay, to notice that Nagus's Botox injections are wearing off. We then get a digression that, or digre yeah, digression that shows a sad division in the ranks. The wolf trends allude to a future issue to imply that Lysis hasn't been too thrilled with their presence, while the reception by Uncle Chuck and Harvey Hugh was more cordial, in other words, more acceptable. In any event, they leave him to plant an explosive charge with a tail noggins. They find him deep in the temple of crazy, cheering up a group therapy session with the voices in his head as the group. It's at the suggestion of one of his voices that he seems his, oh, it's at the suggestion of one of his voices that he assumes his fiend fire form and senses the presence of the wolves. Having one of them scream kind of, help having them having one of them scream kind of helped too. Elizus, meanwhile, is thinking that okay, maybe the girls had a point as he juggles reminisce as he juggles reminiscing and exploitation. As he juggles reminiscing or reminisce and exploitation. The scream, however, sends him running. There follow several pages of dramatic chases and dialogue. It's not enough to keep one of the girls from getting caught but a low-tech diversion throwing a rock momentarily confuses Nagus, who then gets hit with a mid-tech diversion, a flash grenade. With the, captured, with the captured wolves released, everyone beats feet into an obstacle course of crystal, of crystal stalactites. Yeah, stalactites. Stalactites, stalagmites, and whatever you call them when they grow silent. Making it back to the tunnel they came in, they blow a hole in the door and take another flying leap. 
Nagus blows wind at them, and they tumble into the darkness, which is good enough for Nagus. Now remember what I said on the score. Okay? 30 is perfect. You know, you get the idea. 30 is like an A+. Plus. It's like a 10 out of 10 system. Alright. Okay. Head score. The head of the story. Last things first. That was a crappy ending to this installment. It's the same kind of ending, though, that has, a, that has plagued writing for I don't know how long. The assumption of doom. We've all seen it. The hero is in a seemingly inescapable trap. The villain then walks away, and the hero escapes anyway. Where do they get these lazy villains? For every Scott Evil who insists that a single bu bullet could do what an unnecessary elaborate killing mechanism couldn't, there's a Dr. Evil saying, you just don't get it. Uh, there's a Dr. Evil saying, and I quote, you just don't get it. Frankly, neither do I. The only thing I liked about this installment was Narcus's butt ugly transformation. It was a great, it was very reminiscent of Oscar Wilde's story, quote unquote, The Picture of Dorian Gray, with its theme of the hidden evil, despite a handsome and social, well, despite a handsome and socially acceptable facet. And we get another visit from the voices in my head choir. Unfortunately, I'm losing hope that the plot device of Val is going to end up or is going to end up being a game changer. Ian didn't even bother to tease it up a little in this, in this installment. Beyond that, we have another by the numbers action story padded out with exploitation flashbacks or side flashes since the stories themselves haven't been published yet. Maybe we should just call them spoilers. Head score six. Tracy okay, the I score, the artistic score. Tracy Yarlin really gets to cut loose in this one. Between fire between Fiend Fire and August and the gliding spot. If anything, the drawings that made up the flashbacks just didn't have the same power. Hearts, uh, uh, I score, artistic score, seven. Heart score. The ill will between Eliza and the wolf girls should have gone somewhere. But the way it was dragged into the story and then more or less forgotten just undid whatever it was trying to accomplish. Heart score, not available. So basically, he's giving this a 13 out of 30, which, as I said about one of the uh, two Sonic the Hitchhog 240, when he gave it an 11 out of 30, he's giving this the same kind of score. So you're looking at basically a D minus right there. So a D minus story in his opinion. So yeah, D minus story in his pin. And then, let me check my time here, we get part three, Occupational Hazards, which takes place, which takes place in Sonic Universe 43, released in October. And of course, it's the same people as before. He does say something about the cover. He says, convert chaos, it says, with an emphasis on chaos. You have Silver, Shard, Larry, Jeff, and Castle Acorn. The composition is balanced well enough, but it still feels like a lot of separate elements with nothing to unify them. Okay, Larry is ducking down to keep from getting blasted by Shard. But that's about it. That's what he says about the cover. Now, here's what he says about... Um, about the story itself. And I quote, Aung San Heroes Part 3, Occupational Hazards. This is what he says. In a one-page prelude, or prelude, we find the Templars, about whom, about whom more later, at war with the Axis Order. 
Val informs Mogul that the Abalonites have turned against them. This will be on the midterm. Tracy, Jen, Tracy then jumps past the credits page, which is shoved to the last page of the story. We get a long distance shot of Silver, Shard, and Larry, collect collectively call signed the Three Stooges, emerging from the pit where they've been trapped. Silver and Larry need to take a breather, literal. But Shard is unsympathetic until he realizes he could use some R&R, &R, rest and recharge himself. The only upside is that Jeff's airborne, airboard got bugged. Jeffrey himself meets with Knox, who explains his advanced case of Bud Ugly as a minor malay. A minor malay. A malay. That minor malay hey, looks like it would need as much facial work as both Elizabeth Taylor and Michael Jackson received lifetime. As far as unifying the voices in his head, in effect of Eggman's disrupting the space-time continuum, I don't think Ferrell food himself could help him very much. Jeffrey hands off Val's bones and asks Nogus for some explanation, which he promptly delivers. He intends to cast a hoodoo on the Acorn Council when they convene, abo convene above him. Apparently to take over the will and command and command the populace, and command the populace, and thus rebuild the Axis order. A prospect that has Nagas salivating with delight. Ew. <laughs> Dan, that's what Dan put here. Jeffrey manages to find his indignation, indignation instead of losing his lunch, declaring that Nagas is making himself worse than the acorn. Nagus tells Jeffrey that he's basically in this up to his acorn. Uh, uh, Nagus tells Jeffrey that he's basically in this up to his baby blues, and there, and that there's not a lot he can do about it. When Nagus begins practicing necromancy, Jeff goes fetal position on us. Fatal pos fetal position on us. Meanwhile, Harvey is choosing. Harvey is chewing out the three stooges for letting Jeff get away. Quote unquote, he was a magical skunk, Silva offers in response. And what by itself would be a candidate for best line of dialogue. Let me uh, check my time here, folks. Got two minutes. After more talk, the three take off for the pit, where at the bottom they find Eliza and the wolf girls. Collectively called, collectively called saying two misses and a hit. The group spends the next four pages putting it all together, unaware that Jeffrey is a few feet away, eavesdropping on the whole thing. His own attention, his own attention, however, is fixed on Shard's Shard, which cues up some flashback of his own. The upshot is that, as far as Jeff is concerned, either Charles or Rotor is doing some double dealing. And he's sure who knows, and he's sure he knows who's behind us. Let me check my time, folks. Okay, got about a minute. Back at the group, most of them are looking for payback except Silver. He thinks that Jeff has a poor misguided soul who needs a good talking to. Eliza initially doesn't buy it, but eventually caves in and lets Silver take a meeting. Alright, I'll get into that meeting part in just a little bit.